Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome to the third week of June. The third episode on a parenting series we have been running this month of June. We are so excited to come to you again. You know, we've dealt with parenting from conception to birth, from birth to seven, and today we are dealing with effectively parenting preteens. And if you're joining us for the first time, you are meeting Ocholi Okutepa, my beloved husband, and Julia Okutepa. And just to say that this show is not scripted in terms of all that we just did. We just put on the camera. Our guys are just in the camera, directing, and, and we just flow. Mm -hmm. All right? So because marriage is supposed to be a flow, you know? Marriage, I, I, let me talk marriage before I come back to parenting. You know, marriage, yeah, there's not a lot of scripting. <laughs> you just, yeah. <laughs> All right, so first of all, have you ever shared the link from this channel, link to any particular video, the channel link generally to anybody if you have not? Just pause this video. Be just kind. Like, don't be taking this blessing alone. Go mm -hmm. and share. Choose five person, 10 person, 20 person, 50 if you have the capacity. Or find one of those your wonderful WhatsApp groups. Mm -hmm. You have not been posting. Just carry the link. Drop there. Say, these guys will bless your life. Mm -hmm. All right? So let's focus on today's conversation. Effectively parenting preteens. Who are preteens? Children who, all right, are children and are not yet teenagers. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about preteen, you may be talking about 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Teenagers begin from 13. Teen. All right, so preteen are children, you know, uh, above, say, a certain age, all right, um, in fact, every age before teen age is preteen, but let's deal with the proper preteen. People who are just heading there, developing, getting there, and all. So going, we are going through puberty. So for, exactly. So for the purpose of this conversation, we're dealing with 7 to 12. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A period of another six years. All right? Our last video dealt with birth to seven. So number one point is that understand that this is the stage of curiosity. Mm -hmm. mm. And you see, parenting is not about crushing children or crushing their morals mm -mm, or crushing their capacity. They are going to ask questions. And many of the questions would actually look like confronting you because or confronting your beliefs, your system, everything you, you know, you know. All right. Many of the questions will be that way. Many of the questions will even question certain things. All right. That you try to teach them uh, before they got to this stage. So understand, we'll talk about that in the next point, but understand right, right now that they are in a stage of curiosity. They are questioning stuff. They are trying to understand why things are what they are, why you said what you said, why you directed what you directed. You know, like we said, before you get to this phase, children take things as facts. Like when things are thrown to them, it's yes, ma. Before you go to this phase, you commanded a lot and they followed. Mm -hmm. You instructed a lot and you just took them for robot. This, that, this, that, this. Let me quickly say this in advance. Their curiosity does not mean they are spoiled. Their yeah. curiosity does not mean they are bad children. Mm -hmm. Their curiosity does not mean they are horrible. Their curiosity does not mean, no, cut all of those, all right? That's not what it means. So, yeah. It means that partly that they are coming into a phase of mental independence and they want to try out their, you know, ideas. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And it means your children are actually normal and sound. Mm -hmm. See, if a child cannot become curious, cannot question things, cannot experiment things, then that child has a problem with development. Mm -hmm. All right, number two point, get ready, get ready, get ready, <laughs> fasten your seatbelt. This is a stage where you will get tons of questions. There we ask questions. Like there we, oh, questions, questions. Daddy, mommy, daddy this, daddy that, daddy this. Now, take it as an opportunity. In fact, that's why this is a parenting class. Take it as an opportunity. Opportunity for what? To help them shape their conclusions. Yeah. Don't forget, you backed instructions at them. You gave instructions to them. You dictated what they thought before this phase. At this point, what you do will determine their conclusions. So at this point, they are not receiving points at fact. They are processing points to come to conclusions. And guess what? If you don't make time to answer their questions, the world will... And, and, you know, unfortunately, some parents had 
already crushed their children in uh, before they even got to the preteen stage, before they got to seven. True. Don't crush your children. Allow them express themselves. Exactly. Let them be able to speak with you and communicate with you. Don't shut your children down. Because when you do that, you now shut the, the channels of communication. And when it comes to asking these questions, they will no longer turn to you to ask those questions. They will ask people around. They will ask friends in school. They will ask perhaps their teachers or people that they have grown to like trust or be more comfortable with. So you want your children to be comfortable with you, be, be present to answer their questions and allow them to communicate. Don't shut them down. And guess, and guess what? The truth is, um, you see these questions? They are going to come at you at all times, including when you are really tired. Mm -hmm. See, one of the things, like what Julia was saying about shutdown, it's not because you are wicked, but you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. Because you see, parents need to realize that I need to supply these answers. And guess what? The reason they would go look for the answer is they must get an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Any question a child asks. Now, be also comfortable to say, can we talk about this later? Be also comfortable to say, I don't really know the answer to this. Can we check it out? Or I teach them to even research the right way. Mm -hmm. All right? See, meet these questions with either answers or direction to answers. Because, see, uh, now I don't even want to get into examples of questions because at this stage of our lives, our last is nine. All right? I think we should have heard two billion questions by now <laughs> combined from three children. Like, you will get questions upon questions all right take your time to respond to them now julia was already jumping to the third point so i'll just jump into it in the process now parent to win their trust judge less and communicate more don't you see that is tired don't you see i just came back from work don't you see i'm trying to sleep there are enough excuses that will come as pure judgment what kind of stupid question is that wow. where did you get that wait, from wait, wait. who told you that yes <laughs> what kind of stupid question is that that's pure like, judgment. like you expect them to know, but they don't know. Exactly. And perhaps they need more clarity. They and in know. fact, they are asking some, they already have an answer. Yes. They want to see whether the answer is correct or you are... You whether have you do... endorse the answer. Exactly. So, you see, this is to avoid a use of abusive language. This is where you, uh, you want to stop being irritable. This is where you want to be patient. This is where you want to suffer long. Let's, 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 let's cut the cheese. Like you want to suffer long. You want, see, there are times I'm driving with these children like, Jesus Christ, can't I rest? Daddy, this, daddy, that, daddy, this, can we, can we this? Do you, do you think, what do you think? Like, oh, God. Give an answer, that answer will lead to another question. And that question will give birth to a lot more questions. Parental win trust, you know why? Very soon, these children will discard you like, like paper. These children have no need for you in their behavior. See, have you seen parents complain about their teenagers? Very soon, I'm telling you, these children will literally act like you don't exist. Act like they don't need to ask you anything. Act like I got it figured out. So you know what? This is where you win their trust. Because if you win their trust at this stage, you become their mentor at their independent phase. Yes. In essence, they'll come back and choose you. Not because you bear rule over them, not because you are an authority over them, because you see, you see all these authority exercise as parents. Like right now, I live on my own with my family. I've been living that way for many years. You see, my father, I respect and honor him according to the word of the Lord, but he can't dictate my life. I go to my father when I choose to. I talk to my father when I choose to. Right? So whether I am choosing to be honorable or not, it's my choice. Whether I'm choosing to, you know, to be frequent about it or not, it's a choice. Like he doesn't bear rule anymore. Right? So you see this power you have. Don't overflex muscles. And that's why many of you listening to us, when you gained your independence, it was like national independence. You were so glad you had left the control of those people who thought they could deal with you and do whatever. So at this phase, eh, gradually begin to realize that, look, you cannot control these children. You can only guide these children. So parent to win trust. And you see, and that's why sometimes, if you are going through this phase and it's getting tough, you need to go back and review your parenting strategy. Yes. Because guess what? It can, it can look impossible. It can look like, you know, we, we get a lot of people talk to us, and we are also parenting preteens. That's the truth. 
and it can get overwhelming. Yeah. But you see, so when people reach out to me, like, you need to talk to my son, you need to talk to my daughter. In fact, he's so stubborn, he doesn't listen, he doesn't this. One of the things I wish I could tell them point blank is that your parenting strategy may be horrible. Yeah. Straight. You're not even parenting to win trust. All right? You are still barking like a dog. I'm sorry. You are barking like a dog. Woo! 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 That's what you are doing. You are barking. You are shouting. You are screaming. Calm down. Calm down. Communicate. Mm. I know the room is upside down. Say, brother, he cannot walk like this. That's not where his shoe should be. This bed, is this the bed you lie on or bed that uh, is a dumping field? It's a bed to lie on. We make the bed. And guess what? Please, parents, learn to communicate with example. Hey, you took that word right out of my mouth. If their bed is not laid, take them to your laid bed. Take them to Just your in case you folded lay your wardrobe. Exactly. Can we see your closet in order before you are backing all around? Can we see that you ate and actually washed the plate and put it in the right place before you are backing? Or they are meeting 30% of the ones you kept and 70% of the ones they kept. All right? See, this is an aid to win their trust. And guess what? Your integrity will win you trust. Yes. Because children may not be able to tell you back. You are shouting over things that they are looking at you. <laughs> you are shouting because you are my parent. If I could shout at you, do you know what I will be telling you? Do you understand? So to win their trust, you need to be at that point where you have integrity with the communication. Mm -hmm. See, parenting is not do what I say, but don't do what I do. Parenting is I'm telling you what I do so that you can also do it. All right? So parent to win their trust. You want to say another thing on that? All right? So it's so important. If I point number four, I've already touched it a little. All right? Resist the all to shout. Who, 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 and throw adult tantrums. <laughs> and you know, when, when it seems that they are not complying or they are not... They will step like, on your nerves. That's why I'm telling you this. They are, they are not doing it. You feel like your, your voice should go higher. You know, you should emphasize the point some more. Perhaps exert some pressure and mm. some spanking and... Una, <laughs> reke, reke, fire. You want to release fire. Ah, some of you will be wondering, what are all these tongues he speaks? I'm Igala by tribe, okay? So, you know, Igala to the world. I just want to make my people proud at home. <laughs> That's a joke, <laughs> come on. All right, so now, resist the urge to shout. Because I tell you something, I'm not prophesying, I'm not cursing. Children will step on not just your toes, your nerves. Mm -hmm. They will step on all the nerves God gave you. They will, see, they will not just step on it, they will trample on it. <laughs> like they will be, they will, see, children will be jumping on your nerves at this stage. And they, see, you will give straight instruction. The person will say, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to be the opposite. Because at this stage, they are dealing with distraction. Yeah. You know, so one singular thing can just come at a child at this stage and complete distraction. So you're actually even training their focus. Yes. And so don't throw... See, there's something called adult tantrum. Some parents are undergoing a full force. In fact, this is the point to even pause this video. You may know one or two parents throwing tantrums all around. Don't tell them it's about tantrum. When they get to this point of the video, they say, mm -hmm, is this why he shared the video to me? Some of you watch it, share to your spouse. So that... I can help them <laughs> calm down. <laughs> see, if you are shouting, you are throwing tantrum. If you are walked up, you are throwing tantrum. If you are hitting them the way you should not, you are throwing tantrum. I'm telling you. So you see, at this stage, learn. And the final point we are making today will help you reduce your tantrum. And what's that final point? Develop strategies that understand their individual personality. All right? See, regard their personality, so we have three children completely mm. different. Completely. Temperament, strengths, talents, weaknesses, completely. You know what parents do? They get them worked up, especially when they come into preteen. They are judging one child on the template of the other. Yeah. Before you know, you begin to compare and weaken them from within. Mm -hmm. You begin to damage their self-esteem because you are using A to compare with B. No, come up with strategies. See, there are children you will never in your life, all right, need to keep... Pam, pam. Mm -mm. There are children that just talking to them is worse for them than any form of punishment. And I'm not meaning abuse. I'm talking about letting them know that was wrong. I mean, we should do better. Hit them deeply. There are children you have to tell to face the world. Please stand there for five minutes and think about your life so that we can talk. All right? There are children that... So you, you realize that your children are... There are children that, before you know it, 
it looks like when you give assignment for house chores, they get it, they're excited to do it, they want to do it. There are children that want to dodge every house chore <laughs> and only enjoy. They're the ones who remind you about going out, ice cream, this. They're the excited type. Mm -hmm. Their temperament wants to, you know, just to have enjoy fun. life. Yeah. Just have fun. I remember when my wife and one of our daughters asked, like, can we ever live without any chores? Like, no plate washing, no making of the bed, no cleaning. My wife said, yes, exactly. You mm -hmm. can. Yes, you can. Why not? She was so shocked. She was like, really? Yes. Like, mommy, you're putting a joke on me. Yes, you can. <laughs> I don't know how you she was shocked. But the mom now said, but that also means we'll never eat. We'll never sleep on our bed. What's going on? You're communicating. If you sleep on that bed, you're going to have to make it. Mm -hmm. If you live in that house, you're going to have to clean it. Yep. If you use those plates, you're going to have to wash it. All right? So it's so important at this point, come up with strategy. So at that point, that person needed strategy of communication, not nonsense. What kind of children are we raising in this generation? God forbid, where I'm coming from. If you ask your mother this kind of question, then we beat the hell out of you. What have you done? What have you done? You have just become a monster. Please calm down. At that point, come up with strategy. See, your children are not perfect. That's why God gave them to you. Let me even tell you why you have work to do. The Bible says that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. In essence, your child will come installed with foolishness. It's your parenting strategy that we uninstall the foolishness that they come with. And what's the meaning of that foolishness? Not that God is wicked and just made the child bad. It means the child came blank. The child came with nothing. And everything they are like a computer is garbage in or garbage out or value in or value out. All right? It's what you do that will dictate what they become. All right? Any yeah. final words before we yes. go? Yes. You know, to help you manage better and avoid these tantrums, it's important to give children structure so they know what is expected of them. So yeah. you don't have to shout or repeat it over and over again. But if the child knows that, okay, when I wake up, these are the things that I need to do. These are the obligations that are required sure. of me as a member of this family. You know, they are better uh, equipped to, to do them. And it's better to have them written down so they cannot say, oh, I forgot. Make it, let it have it written down in, a, in an obvious place, perhaps on a doorpost, on a wardrobe post, or, or where they can easy, easily see it. You can even have like a, a information board for the family. It works when they are able to understand that this is what is expected of me. So they grow up with structure, not just having, you know. Uh, just living day to day as it comes. Mm -mm. all right all right what point did you get what stood out for you can you comment about what stood out for you in today's episode we are so excited have you subscribed to this channel or you stumbled on it have you clicked on the notification bell or you're just there anytime i see it? no 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 be intentional with value and i want to plead with you do you know any parenting forum do you know anywhere where mothers gather fathers gather parents gather can you copy the link to this video and just share to those platforms people need this information you could be saving a life all right and not just saving a life saving a future because if we parent well we'll raise the right children until we come your way again julian ochilio kutepa Couch Conversations. God bless you. God bless you.